everybody, it's Stacey Duffy here, your Denver Metro Real Estate Resource, and I want to answer the question of, can the seller pay my closing costs, okay? Depending on the market, yeah, yeah, they can pay a good chunk of it. So, it also depends on your loan, okay? That's a big factor a lot of people don't think of. It's because a lot of agents will talk about like, oh, it's a, you know, the buyers, you have leverage and all that stuff. So in our current market situation, or at least when I'm filming this video, that is the situation is a lot of times you can negotiate the seller to pay a good chunk of your closing costs. But the lender has really strict requirements on what they can pay and how much they can pay. Okay. And so a lot of people are like, oh, well, I can just have the seller pay everything for me. Mm, if VA, maybe. Yeah, you can probably get away with a lot of that. But for low down payment, conventional and FHA loan programs, you have to have a certain down payment, even if you have like, so here in Colorado, we have the Colorado Housing Finance Authority and Colorado Housing and Finance Authority. So that's CHAFA. So we have a lot of buyers that will take advantage of CHAFA down payment programs. So I'll link to CHAFA. I don't think I can do it up above because it's not a video, but down below, I'll put a link to CHAFA. And they have some great down payment assistance and closing cost assistance programs for to help buyers to get into homes, okay? Essentially, all you're doing is you're financing more money. You're just financing it from somebody else. <laughs> so, which is fine. If it gets you into the house and you can afford the monthly payment and it gets you there, I'm all for it. I've buyers go through that and it's gotten them into amazing equity positions three, four, five years down the road that had they not had that situation, they never would have been able to do what they were able to do. Like, you know, sell their house, take 50 grand, go buy a new build house in another state. Like all kinds of things that you're like, wow, never thought I could do that because you got help at step one, okay? It gets you in a better position down the road. So I'm all for that. However, there are limits on what the seller can give you. And that is one thing that having an educated agent and a really good agent will make or break your situation when you go to buy a house. Because a lot of agents will, like maybe they'll make the offer and say, hey, you know, we're gonna offer you 500K for your house and we want you to, you know, to credit 10,000 towards the buyer's closing costs. Okay, if I'm right, before I write that offer for my buyer, if my buyer's like, that's what I wanna do, I'm gonna call the lender, first and foremost, hands down, because I'm gonna say, how much can we bring? How many credits can we get, right? Because when it comes to time and inspection, a, couple, you know, a week or two down the road, and let's say there's issues in inspection and the seller doesn't wanna fix it, and they're like, here, here's another $5,000 to fix it, and the buyer and the agent and the buyer are like, okay, well, now you have $15,000 of seller credits may not be able to use that. And you're like, well, yeah, but then that's just less money I have to bring to down payment. False, okay? Most lenders will not let you use seller concessions to pay your down payment because then it is not your down payment. <laughs> so that's a really big thing that having an educated buyer's agent and understanding those things because those seller credit amounts change based on the type of loan. They can change based on the amount that you're putting down, like for a 95% loan, for a conventional, you know, like a 5% down conventional loan, the seller, most of the times, depending on the lender and the situation, but a lot of times the seller can credit up, to, can bring up to 3% of the purchase price, okay? Which means it'll probably cover all your closing costs, maybe, you know, HOA fees, you can, you know, use up that money to prepay some HOA fees or something for a few months or whatever. Um, and I've done that for buyers and we'll walk that line just as much as we can because what happens is if you have too much in seller concessions, more than the lender will allow. Um, so let's say 10% down. Um, sorry, I'm looking at some notes here. Then most lenders will allow you to bring up to 6% of purchase price. So in seller concessions and things like that. So it really depends on a lot of these little factors. But let's say, you know, that $500,000 house and the buyer and seller agree to, you know, seller says, okay, fine, we'll give you $15,000 total. 10 off the original um, is a credit based on the original offer and another 5,000 based on inspection findings or something that needs to be done. And then the lender's like, you get to, you know, I don't know, a week or two before closing or not even that long, three, four, five days before closing and they're doing the closing disclosure and they're like, okay, cool. You get to give about $2,500 back to the seller. And you're like, whoa, 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 what? That, but, but that's my money. Can't use it. Use it or lose it, babe. And so 
that's the piece. <laughs> like so many people screw themselves that way and they don't understand it, especially in a market condition where the buyer has some leverage and can negotiate to get a lot of these seller concessions. They can't just give you cash that you put in your pocket and walk down the road. Like they can pay your closing costs, but the lender's gonna have really strict requirements on these things. So don't over negotiate your seller concessions. Because then, I mean, and I've I've talked to lenders and we've tried to be really, really strategic of like, okay, what can we do? Can we buy down the rate? Now, what that's what a lot of people are doing right now is they're saying, hey, seller's gonna pay twenty thousand dollars towards the buyer's closing cost. And you're like, whoa, whoa, that's crazy. Well, if you start buying down the rate, cool. Like if you're gonna buy it down a chunk because the rates are so high and that's what you know makes it affordable for the buyer to get into the house and that's the strategy, great. There's a lot of buyers and sellers working that out right now. And I think it's a great option for certain buyers. But you have to understand, like even with that money, you've gotta fit within these limits for some lenders. And so knowing all these little nuances is really, really, really important for your agent. You don't have to know these, but your agent has to know enough to say, I'm gonna call the lender because the last thing I wanna do is get the seller to agree to something that will screw you in the end or you have to give it back. Because chances are the seller's not gonna be like, oh, you can't use that and I, I get to get it back? Oh, let me figure out another way for you to get it. They're gonna be like, dude, should have figured that out up front. That was your deal, not my problem. So have an educated agent. Ask your agent, like, if you're talking to your agent about seller concessions or about like, hey, can the seller pay my closing costs? Can they pay all that so I don't have to? Your agent should be saying, there are limits. We can do a lot. Let me talk to your lender, okay? That should be the answer. Unless they are your lender, because some agents are licensed as lenders as well, in which case, yes, they can give you an answer because they can do that. Um, but that should be the answer of let me talk to your lender and see what we can do because I don't want you to have to give any money back, okay? So anyway, just today's little tip, making sure that if you're negotiating those seller concessions or those seller paid closing costs that you're not giving that money back. And then for sellers, you bet. If someone's like, hey, we want the seller to pay X, Y, Z, and I know that's above what the buyer uh, can use, I'm going to let you know, seller, like, hey, I don't think they can use all of this, and I don't think their agent realizes it yet. So just letting you know, you may get some of this back, no guarantees. we got to figure out what the deal is down the road. But hey, I'm going to help my client to their advantage because that's my job. Okay, that's what I'm hired to do. So anyway, um, if Denver Metro area, definitely hit me up. Happy to help you. Happy to strategize, do all that stuff, unless you have an agency agreement with another agent, and then I can knock it in the middle of it because that's called sign crossing, and I'm not stepping on anybody's toes. It's not my business. Um, if you're in another market area and you need a recommendation for a good agent, hit me up down below. I have a link you can put in your information. I love doing the matchmaking. I have a great, great, great database of amazing agents and experts, CRS agents. Um, we're in the top 2% of agents in the U.S. Um, like myself. So let me recommend one of those awesome people to you. And thanks so much for the time and have a great day.